it must be clear, you know, that in one spiritual search, the discovery of the truth, it has to be natural. It cannot be something that you make up. It cannot be something that you keep up. Because you have never been able to keep anything up. You just cannot. The force of nature impels that life changes, and whatever belongs to the realm of change will change. Even when you force, actually, you are creating some a strangeness. So, if you have a practice, which say, for instance, now, you do this practice every day, but it is a joy, and so that becomes also natural. That, that is fine. But you are doing a practice to do something. What I am pointing to is that which is not a practice. In the same way, you don't have to keep practicing to be George, if your name is George. You don't have to keep remembering, OK, I must remember my name is George, unless you are suffering from amnesia or something. You don't have to remember your George. And George is not even what you are. Something here is totally natural. When it is discovered to such a profound in such a profound way that it it bypasses the need to remember, because that is what happened when something is so deeply um, seen <clears throat> and is natural, it does not need practice in that way. If there is a practice, it will be to fend off, to push away the tendency to doubt yourself, but not to be yourself. So the, the, the pushing away, you can call a practice, but the being yourself cannot be a practice. If you are trying to be yourself, then you create somebody to try and be themselves, which is an absurdity. It is not like that. And these things must be clear, you see. Now, don't feel, oh, but now what, I've, what have I got to do? Now I've got to find. What I'm releasing you, in fact, from a kind of trick of the mind that the very practice at a certain stage will begin to interfere with the clear seeing. In the beginning, it is important, but as you, it's the practice in the early stages peels away the false layers of assumed identity, at some point even this practice itself begins to fall away in the light of true recognition. Bear this in mind. No? And it will also remind you, if you hear this inside, in fact, it begins with just hearing and understanding what I am pointing to. As you come to see, uh, but it is true, actually. It is not something that needs developing. It is not something that is going to be created. It is not something that Muji is going to give you like a parcel. I cannot give that. What I can give is, uh, is something that will only be of value if you receive. And that thing is to follow this guidance, just opening a curtain. Uh, to real seeing, but the seeing will be entirely your own. This is important. You see, now I'm not talking about you and me, and ultimately even this you and me also will gradually merge. You can say, experientially, or fall aside. It will not be so significant, because the more significant the you and me are, the more separation is endorsed in some way. You see, so please try and understand. I am not giving you a big thing to do. Perhaps the way of really understanding is again listening to this with a very quiet heart and allow it somehow to reveal itself. This is the simplicity of seeing. Rather than hard, strenuous work and thinking and figuring out, relax a little, easy. Relax a little. What you are searching for is right in the heart of your own being. So this is what you are going to discover, and what you are discovering in fact, true satsang. So uh, everything is total good fortune. Your life is good fortune. Don't miss it. Hmm? Because if you follow too much, uh, all the ideas floating around, 
you may just go off floating on some cloud in search of the sky. That is it. Think about it. So, big love. Okay. Yeah, di mai, di o, yo, na.